myself and Buckethead Props are competing in a challenge to see who can make the best Star Wars prop on a maximum £20 budget. So my entry into the £20 prop challenge is going to be a mask of one of these guys. The budget doesn't involve tools, it just involves the raw materials, so if you do have a budget for a building you don't have any of the tools, you're going to have to bear that in mind, but the tools that I use are stuff that I use all the time. So here's a list of everything I'm going to be using for this build. So what we're going to do first is work out the base shape of the head and just get it so it fits my head correctly. I'm just going to template this out in paper before transferring that over to cardboard. Now I don't have a dignified way of measuring my face so uh, this is kind of just how I do it.
So this is now the base of the Tuscan Raider head, all done in cardboard. Normally I'd do something like this out of EVA foam, but the budget doesn't quite allow it. So cardboard you can pick up pretty much anywhere for free. Um, I picked up some cardboard at a local garden centre as they got cardboard boxes that they hand out just to help you get your plants home, things like that. But you can get cardboard pretty much anywhere. And so what I'm going to do now that it's all glued together is I'm going to strengthen everything and give it a little bit of uh, paper mache. So I've got some PVA glue mixed with a little bit of water and I've got some um, strips of uh, newspaper cut out that I'm going to use to go over this. Uh, obviously I got a big bit of PVA glue but you're not going to need a lot and you can get small little uh, tubs of it for 99p which is the amount of glue that I will be using. It's just I've got a little bit left in here that I can use at the moment. So we're going to go over everything, give it a good couple of layers and then leave it to dry overnight and it should be nice and strong in the morning. Right, so that is completely dry now. I've done the inside and the outside, so it just strengthens it a bit more. So I just need to cut the eye holes out again. And then we're going to start doing some of the um, other detail pieces. Like we've got to do um, parts for the eyes, the little bits of detail that stick out from the cheeks, as well as attach the spikes on the top of the head. So, oh, Tuscan Raiders eyepieces. Um, while they kind of look at first glance like a, just a straight bit of pipe, they're actually a slight cone shape. So I was going to use a bit of cardboard tubing for like the, uh, the base shape of it, but I'm actually going to make all of it out of EVA foam. Just got a, a little thin sheet of uh, craft foam here. She's going to make it out of. I found it in grey, and then I'm going to do a little bit of paint over the top. It just uh, helps with the, the painting as well. Okay, so this is about the right shape you want for your template. It's got a slight curve on the top and the bottom. The sides are angled, so I'm not going to do it so it overlaps. So I want a really clean line, so it lines up at the bottom. And then you've got like a really slight cone shape, and it should be about the right length. Might need a bit of trimming down. I think it'll be a little bit shorter. So running along the bottom of the little eye pieces, there are a couple of little slits and they're slightly off at an angle, so I want to keep the seam at the bottom of the eye and then we kind of want them to be about here. Just going to go back in and neaten that up with the Dremel, same as I've done on the outside, just to round the foam off a little bit, just make it look like it's got more of a shape to it. To make the two cheekbone details, I'm going to use the foam again and wrap a little bit up with a pen inside just to sort of get the right shape and then do a thicker shape around the outside so I can glue it on. So this one is a little bit easier to do, it's just a case of getting the right length. So just looking at some reference photos here. The end bit only has to be quite small and the other bit does have a slight cone shape to it as well. So probably about, about this length we're looking for I think.
So the little detailing pieces are now all put together. So I got some of the, my metallic silver paint and I'm just going to paint over it to make it look more like metal than foam. And I'm also going to paint over this as well. Now normally I'd paint over it with like a plain white or a plain black. But trying to keep the cost of the build down we're just going to use the same paint and go straight over it just so like things like the text don't show up through the fabric because you'll be able to just about see it because the fabric's not quite opaque enough to stop it going through completely. So it should be enough just to cover it and uh, make it a little bit more uniform in colour when the bandages go on. So for the little nose piece, I've just cut out a basic shape and I've layered a bunch of foam on top of each other and just sort of filled in the sides with hot glue. So when that dries, I'm going to get the Dremel and then I'm just going to carve it out and round it out and hopefully we'll have a fairly smooth nose shape. So whilst those bits are drying, it's time to actually start putting something on the head. Um, we're going to start off with the leather. Now, this is um, fake leather, it's like a vinyl. We've got it, a kind of a, a dark brown. So we're going to put a little bit around the eyes and around the cheek area and then sort of build up around the mouth part here. I just had to trim some of the face out as well just so it fit a little bit better because now it's a bit more solid, it doesn't flex as well on my head, so a little bit more of a gap for my nose and for my chin. But now it fits alright. Got all our silver details on now. I'm still waiting on the belt to arrive so I can wrap around here. So I'm going to start doing some stuff on the top of the head, like start adding a little bit of fabric around here. But first, what we want to do is we want to attach the head spikes. Now on the Tuscan Raider, the head spikes, they don't have a sharp point. They're a, a lot flatter on the top of the head. So I'm going to try and get my Dremel and flatten it down a little bit, but not too much. And obviously it helps just with the, the fact I'm clumsy and I don't want to stab myself with a spike. So I'm just gonna Dremel one down as a test because we only need four and these come in a pack of five, which is useful. So these are more for attaching to fabric. So you got this bit here and then you've got like a little, a little uh, screw there's the main body and then you just put a hole in it and then you just sort of screw it together. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing here where we're going to screw it on but I've got to drill holes where I want them to go in the top of the head. Those are the head spikes now in place. So I had to go on the inside with a Dremel and just kind of grind out a little bit of the cardboard just so it was thin enough that these uh, little metal divots could poke through and uh, screw in. Obviously you've got to be really careful, you don't want to grind through all the way to the other side and make a massive hole. So just grind a little bit off. But yeah, so they're screwed in and they're nice and uh, firm. 
So what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of this fabric just around sort of the eye area around here. Because some of this leather is going to show through, so it's going to come up just sort of around the brow area a little bit before we do any of the bandages. So this is a fabric. This is a fabric called a calico. I was going to use a hessian. But when I was in the fabric store, I kind of looked at the difference between the hessian and the calico. And the calico looked like it would be um, a much nicer fit. It does have like a sort of definite weave to it, which uh, you can see a little bit more on the eye than you can to camera. There you go, you can see it's, it's, it's fairly thick. It feels quite dense and you can like shred the sides a little bit and it'll look quite rough. And I did get this for cheaper than I would have got it online as I went to my local store to get it. So for half a meter, this was two pounds. So this has actually left room in the budget for something extra. Some of this stuff, this stuff is called tulle. That's spelled T-U-L-L-E. You can get this stuff for as cheap as one pound 20 online. Now I already had some of this, so the one pound 20 is what I'm adding to the budget. And basically it's like a mesh material. You can see when you just got one layer of it, it's really see-through. But if you build it up, it's quite opaque. So you can take as many layers as you like and you'll be able to see through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to cover up the eye holes and cover up the inside of the mouth. Just so when this is on, you can't see me underneath it. But it also allows for breathability. So, looking at some reference images, uh, these images are actually from a kit called the Godzilla kit. Uh, just showing like what layers need to go on. So there's one little bit that goes over the top of the nose. Then over the top of that is two more straps. Then you've got like a little piece that goes down from the top and just over the bridge of the nose here with a thinner strap over the top. So that seems to be sort of like the main layers of this. So we don't have a huge amount of the uh, the leather. So I'm probably just going to do the two main layers, the thin piece and the edge bit here. Now when you're doing something like this, it's always a good idea to keep these buckles because you never know if you're going to need something similar to this in a future project. So I'm actually going to use the end of this for that little nose bridge bit because it's kind of the right shape already. This thing. Actually if I cut it to the beginning of the hole and then I know I've got a lot to work with. So I didn't want to cut the end to a slightly more accurate shape because you cut it you're going to get the inside material in and with the end of the, uh, the belt it still maintains its colour. Cut a thinner piece out of a second belt. Now the only problem with cutting a thinner piece is one side is not going to have the colour on it. So that side we're going to have to face in toward the mask. So now begins the pretty much final stage of this build, 
which is wrapping the rest of the head in bandages. Now I've added a little slit in the back. This is just to help it sort of flex out and sit on my head and it's a little bit better because it's a bit tight around the top. I'm going to leave it as that open gap and then just cover the bandages over so it's got some room to do that basically. I'm just going to use some of this calico fabric again. Just cut it into strips and just slowly layer it over the top and hopefully should have enough. Now what I'm doing with the bandages is not gluing the strip all the way around so I can leave a gap. So I'm just randomly putting them on so like I've got a little strip here. So there's like a little gap of silver so what I'm going to do is because I want these laid over the top, I actually want to lay this underneath so I've got a little gap under here. Sort of squeeze it under and then kind of fit it round get it so it's covering the rest of the silver and then when it's in a position I'm happy with I can then glue that down here is the finished bandaging on the Tuscan Raider. Now I found the easiest method was to cut the fabric and then rip it apart. So you just cut it a tiny bit and then rip it the rest of the way. So then it gives the really rough edges and you don't have to spend ages trying to rough them up with scissors. So it's just spending time going over, layering everything over at the top and underneath and making sure I've covered every little bit of uh, the cardboard dome underneath. And now, you could leave it like this, but I think it looks a little bit too clean for being in the desert. But one problem is, our budget doesn't allow us to get another colour of paint in order to weather this. So I'm going to use a method of weathering that's going to be free for most of you because it's most likely something you have in the house. Coffee granules, this is just instant coffee, but if you don't have any coffee in your house, you can just use tea as well. So basically, I'm just going to use it to stain some of the bandages and make it look a little bit worn. And uh, because the vast majority of people are going to have something like this in their house, counting it as free for the weathering. So I've got a little bit in a lid here, which I'm just going to use as sort of like a little mixing pot. And I'm going to see sort of like how saturated I kind of want to make the colour. So just add a little bit of water here, test it on the inside where I've got some of the leftover material, sort of neaten it up a bit in there, see how that comes out and then just, just see what works really. Here is the completed Tuscan Raider head. All the coffee staining is now dried, so it's now gone a little bit of a lighter colour than it was when I was painting it on. So it does smell a little bit of coffee, but that smell will fade over time. 
But look at that, it now looks like it's actually been in the desert for some time. Done a little bit of weathering, sort of on the eye pieces in sort of all the gaps. Yeah, this is just all done with the coffee and it sticks fairly well. Again, trying to make it not look too much like liquid, but it just gives it a little bit sort of like a mottling effect and a little bit on the leather there as well. I've taken the fabric out of the middle of the mouth because it wasn't very comfortable wearing it, so this is going to be something that um, I'll probably wear with a balaclava, otherwise you'll see the mouth through the gap there, but it's always good to have an air hole in there. And so yeah, I've got some of the inside painted up as well and covered in just to make it look a little bit neater. But here you go, that's the finished £20 Tuscan Raider. So this is part of the £20 prop challenge that I'm doing with Buckethead Props. And at the moment, I don't know who the winner's gonna be. This video's gonna come out after we decide who the winner is. If I'm not, then oh well. I still have fun making this and I hope this gives you guys an idea of how to make your own cheap Tuscan Raider head. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, may the force be with you.